Uh, good evening and thank you ever so much for the invitation to be here tonight. I really would like you to vote against tuition fees because a vote against tuition fees from this union would be noticed. Tuition fees in Britain are a confidence trick. They rely on the naivety and the faith and the trust of people who have been fooled, particularly poorer students and their families. And it is because tuition fees are a confidence trick that I would like you to demonstrate that you are aware of this, as I explain in the next nine minutes why this is the case, and to vote to say that you don't agree with them. I need to know a little bit about you, so I need to know who's an undergraduate at the University of Dublin. The vast majority of you are undergraduates at the University of Dublin. Who currently has taken out a loan to pay for their tuition fees? You may notice that the number of hands that have gone up is not quite the same. Because we are English, I will not do the next question, <laughs> which is to reveal who doesn't need to take out a loan because their tuition fees are being paid for them by the parents. I will then allow anybody to put their hand up who is funding themselves because they work so hard at 15, 16 and 17 on that paper round. Anybody like Jacob Breesmore? <laughs> no. The confidence trick is that those of you who have your hands who have taken out a loan are going to have to pay back a huge amount of money for the privilege of having come to this university. 40, 50, 60, maybe 100,000 pounds, depending on the job you get. You are not going to get a lowly paid job. You'll be paying back this enormous amount of cash. But those who didn't put up their hands will not be paying a penny. Nothing. Because they come from families rich enough to have paid their fees up front. This is just one of the inequities of the tuition fee system. Nowhere in the rest of Europe has fees anywhere like this. In Germany you essentially go for free. A few hundred euros gives you a travel pass and some other things, but that's it. Fees are not normal in Europe. In China, it's the same cost as Germany. You wouldn't do this. In the United States, most students there, they take out loans but not having fees as high as we have them. You've got to go to Chile and a few other very odd countries to find this kind of experiment being played out. It is extremely weird and very, very recent. And it saves the rich, the parents of the people who didn't put their hands in this room, on tax, who would otherwise have to fund a universal system as is normal. That is the division. By the way, in my own University of Oxford, the proportion who pay nothing is about a third. Two thirds of our students have to take out loans and pay back enormous amounts. A third are not paying a penny because their parents are paying it at £9,000 a year. No interest, no loan, £27,000 all in a loan tax society. You are often told that tuition fees are fair because people who don't go to university shouldn't have to pay. Not forgetting that, of course, the people who haven't paid are the very richest for paying those taxes, which are normal elsewhere in Europe. But you're told, oh no, we should have fees because the people who go to university, they shouldn't have to pay. They'll only have to pay if they earn so much that their tax is a high rate of income. Tuition fees are entirely about low taxes for the rich in this country. That is why they were brought in by essentially a Conservative government popped up by Nick Clegg. And they're a con on most people. 93% of students in universities cannot get their parents to pay them up front. The argument that universities benefit the middle class, remember, over half of all young women in England now go to university. Over half. Going to university is no longer a privileged thing. But we brought in fees just at the point when over half of young women went. Oh, and young women, as opposed to young men, because more women go, are going to disproportionately have to pay this money back. The argument that this is fair to people who don't go to university could be used for anything else. You could use it for the National Health Service. You could say it's unfair that people 
who don't use the National Health Service have to pay for it. And the middle class, as we know, live 10 years longer than the working class. The middle class, of course, as you know, because you're very clever, make far more use of the National Health Service than the working class. The working class in this country die earlier. So you could say, oh, we have a fee for the National Health Service. You can have a fee for everything like this. It is a risible. It is a risible argument. But what's the alternative? The best country to look at for the alternative, because it is most similar, is Germany. A couple of statistics for you. In 1995, 732,000 babies were born in the UK. 765 babies were born in Germany, 35,000 more in Germany, 30,000 more in Germany. 21 years later, we have 2.28 million students in the UK, most of them undergraduates. In Germany, 2.81. Half a million more students. A higher rate of going to universities in Germany. Universities, by the way, which were a little bit more serious about teaching and a little less worried about marketing and saying how great they are and just get on and do it. And in Germany, it is free because it's for the good of Germany. And not just free for Germans. 330,000 people from overseas, anywhere overseas, go for free in Germany because that's for the public good and it makes their universities better. Tell your younger brothers and sisters they can go to Germany, even after Brexit. They can go to Germany. How can the Germans do it? Have they got a magic money tree? How are they managing to fund university education? How do the French do it? How do the Italians do it? How do they do it in Finland? How do they do it in Sweden? How do they do it in every bloody elsewhere in Europe, apart from this tragic country in which a particular group of people got to try out a little experiment to embarrass themselves? and to try to fool the vast majority of people, including all of you who held your hands up, and are going to be paying back those loans for the rest of your lives, so that somebody else sitting in this room can get here for cheap and mum and dad can afford free skiing trips rather than two. It says Labour Party policy. That immediately upon the election of the Labour Party, which is far from an impossibility, given the biggest swing since 1945, in June 2017, it is Labour Party policy that immediately new fees and loans will be abolished for incoming students. That is there. That is on the table. That is what students are being offered, their families being offered, their grandparents are being offered. Because it's a policy that works elsewhere. You may raise the issue, what about you? What about you who've taken out loans? And this is going to be tricky. This is going to be hard. Ending fees is easy. It's a vote. It's in the manifesto. That's it. Giving you recompense is harder. The good news is that the government have failed so far to sell off the student loan books. So they keep on trying. But for some reason, private bankers don't want to buy your loans. Partly because they don't think they're going to get as much back from you, because many of you, less so here at Durham, we know, we have the individual data. We know from each university what the average salaries are at the moment, although they're going to go down and be lower when there's more students. But the private companies are not willing to buy your loans, because they're not great. But you are going to be expected to pay them back and back and back again. This needs to be sorted out at some point in the future. In the medium term, it will be sorted out through the housing market. In about 10 years' time, 12, 15, some of you, those lucky enough not to go to London, may be thinking about trying to buy a starter flat. And although they lie to you and tell you, oh no, you're paying back whatever it is, 6, 9% of your income won't affect how much they'll lend you. Of course it bloody well will. You're not stupid. For you lot, part of the way that this will work out is the housing market will have to go down in value because you won't better borrow the kind of money needed because you're paying back the student loan. But it's a terrible, terrible thing that this happened. I'll end before he begins to bang the bell by just saying again, remember above all else, the richest, best of 7% of students nationally don't borrow a penny. Somebody, most likely their parents or grandparents is paying the tuition fee up front. They are going to university for zero. 
Mum and Dad only have to pay £27,000 plus a little bit as it goes up with inflation. But if you don't have parents who could come up with £9,000 a year, the punishment for you for choosing the wrong parents when you were born is 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, up to £140,000 because you picked the wrong parents. It couldn't be simpler. Vote it down. Show that you are clever enough to understand the confidence trick. Thank you very much.